Has thine ears deceived me? It, it can't be. Has Steins Gate finally returned from the brink of darkness with another season? Oh, it's lit. Welcome everyone, this is Juju Gamer here and I'm bringing you guys another treat. I'm on a roll. Three videos in three days, I'm loving this. Uh, this time I'm sticking with, with anime and I'm going to be giving you my very first impression of Steins Gate Zero, Episode 1. Now, I'm, I'm not walking in as blind to this series as I did Megalobox. As I'm going to do with Persona 5. I <laughs> there's there's a couple reasons for that. With Steins Gate, I, I had to rewatch it when I heard it was another season coming out. I had to rewatch it. And it's still and it still remains one of the greatest science fiction anime of this decade, in my opinion. <clears throat> Due to the way the story is woven. It's it, it, it's just so much I can talk about Steins Gate the first season, but we're not here for that. We're here for Steins Gate Zero. So like I said, um, Steins Gate Zero also had a visual novel that I watched. I I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched some walkthroughs, some videos, trying to get a sense of what this was so I could prepare myself for the anime. Cause you know, cause we first heard about it and it didn't come out till like two years later. But but that's besides the case. It's finally here now. I'm not even going to spoil you Steins Gate, but if you haven't seen it, please watch it before watching this one. It explains so much. It really will. You, you'll understand. That this first episode gave me, it, it made me understand why, uh, why Steins Gate ended the way it did. So, wa watch Steins Gate the first season before watching this one. It, it'll help so much. It really will. <laughs> now, with that being said, let's go to, let's start off the episode. The very first scene in this we see quite possibly Suzu and what looks to be an older Mayuri with uh, I, I believe with the child so my first question is she has a child what is going on sweet innocent Mayuri had a child <laughs> but that's besides the case um Mayuri in this scene seems to be lamenting over the fact that she has some regrets to the point where she's driven to tears fast forward to the past or to another timeline right we see Okabe much different than what we've seen him he's even in therapy this man is in therapy from what happened y'all I mean he's so different it took me a minute to to get a sense that he wasn't the same now you know that this that this Okabe is not the same he's not as eccentric he's not he's not chuny <laughs> He's not being a chuny in the sense that he's you know he's not wearing all white, he's not eccentric, he's more quiet and reserved, and he's wearing all black. So it was like, you know, with that being said, uh, Mayu asked him, does he want to meet up with Ferris and Rukako and Akiba? And you know, this this changed Okabe. You know, he he said he was you no know, he was feeling better now that he's you know coming out of counseling to Mayu. And he, he's working around, you know, going to counseling is helping him. It's helping him with his psyche. And even the mere mention of Akiba kind of hurt him. To the, and it's on the point that it, it had a time skip. It had a time skip from where he went, from where Steins Gate ended to where this one is taking place. So we come to the restaurant where Ferris immediately calls him Kiyoma and they start... You know, you know how, you know how Ferris is. <laughs> if you've seen season one, you know how these two always go at it when they see each other. In their chuny battles. <laughs> their imaginations just go wild. And he was like, first off, quit calling me Kyoma. I'm not that anymore. So, the whole experience just kind of changed him. To the point where he even called it a dark past that he's not dealing with anymore. So, it, it changed him, but it also matured him. To the point where, you know, he's now going to college. He's getting a degree. He's going to seminars, meeting highly trained professors, you know. You know, cause he, he's a smart guy. He really is. And so then Mayu mentioned that Yuki wanted to meet her at the lab. And at the mere mention of the lab, <laughs> at the mere mention of the, of the lab, Okabe almost panicked. His whole mood changed. But, you know, he, he accepted. He was like, okay, we can go. Now, here we get to the <laughs> to the fun part. 
Um, we, we we come back to the lab, and Suzu and Daru Itaru are kind of talking. You know, Itaru is busy playing his game, being all kind of pervy and stuff. And you know, Suzu is not having it. <laughs> She's really not. She's getting annoyed with her father, her past father. It was like, come on, I need you to build this time machine so we could, you know, restore order. And he was like, oh, okay, okay, we'll, we'll get to it. Why can't we use a time machine that, that's already there? And she was like, if you saw it, it'll create a time paradox, and nobody wants that. Nobody wants that to happen. Creating okay? a time paradox will ruin everything. To the point where Suzu's whole mission is basically convincing her quote-unquote uncle to go back in time to, you know, complete the mission. And with Okabe not willing to go back in time, she's kind of just stuck. So she's stuck in her, she's stuck in the past, and the past she's not familiar with. So she's getting upset because she wants to, she wants to potentially save everyone. She wants to save everyone. So Mayu and the gang quickly enter the lab. When they enter the lab, Daru is completely stunned. He's shocked. He's shocked that, you know, Okabe hasn't, he mentioned it earlier, he hasn't been to the lab since, since the ending of Steins Gate, since that ended. So, it's December when this is taking place. He hasn't been there since August. So, after a quick little introduction, you know, Okabe meets Suzu and they go up to the roof to start talking. And Suzu basically tells him, I'm trying to stop World War Three. That is the timeline the beta line that, that is currently going on because he is not willing to go to the past. He's just done. He, he's done. Like, he's not even going to try and save, you know, what was it, 5.7 billion people? He, he's not He's not even going to try and save it because he is so hurt. He is so, so hurt. If you watch Steins Gate 1, you saw, you saw how many times he went back in time to different timelines, to different world lines, to save Mayuri, and how each failure affected him greatly because he couldn't save her. And then when he went back in time to save Kurisu, he also realized he couldn't save her. He failed again. So the past failure of that happened. His psyche is damaged. He is damaged. He's not going to do it anymore until he's healthy, until he's mentally stable to do it. So. He, he was like, man, no, I'm not doing it. You know, Suzu kept agging him on, agging him on, like, come on. Come on, uncle, I need you. The whole world needs you. It's one life to matter of 5.7 billion people to the point where Okabe just blew up. だったら、ダメだ。過去回へを接生かえして追い通せるのはこの宇宙の仕組みから逸脱することなんだ。人間が手を出して医療域じゃない神の領域なんだ。触れれば必ず罰を受けることになる。残酷な。Oh, uh, Okabe kind of just blew it up at Suzu. You know, you know, Suzu's like, I'm not giving up on you. I know you can do this. I have faith in you. So this is on the way home. Mayu is basically saying that that ever since the incident has happened, she's been going to the lab but because he's not there with her. It feels extremely lonely for her. She's feeling lonely in the lab, like nothing interesting has been happening, and that was the first time the lab has been lively since August. And so then they're interrupted by Okabe has to meet with, with one of his professors who's given a, sem a seminar at the school he's attending tomorrow. A very important seminar for him in that he's working the seminar, he's working and attending the seminar. So, <clears throat> so the two of them bid farewell, you know, Okabe goes and has a good time with the professors, with, has a good time with the professors because they're going out drinking, they're having fun. So on the way home, he decides to take a look at the pamphlet of what he's going to be, what the professor's going to be talking about. And he realizes that what he's talking about is, the topic is going to be artificial intelligence. I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I know artificial intelligence is some real sciencey stuff. <laughs> It really is. So while he's reminiscing or trying to figure out what the topic is going to be, he sees the university and he's instantly reminded. 
instantly reminded of X Bay of his now dead lover. He's instantly reminded because he knew that that was the university that she went to. That was the same university. And even just the thought of thinking triggers a flashback. And this flashback, this flashback is very cruel. Just watch this. That's some gruesome stuff, ain't it? It really is. He's suffering from PTSD at this point. It really is. So now we are introduced to uh, Hiajo Maho. And, you know, she, she's a rather... <laughs> the, the misunderstanding of those two had is pure hilarity. It really is. It really is. Because she does not look her age. She's like... I, I guess she's like the token lowly. But she's really smart. She's a professor in this as well. And so we're moving right along, right along. She's looking for the staff room. Okabe points her in the direction of the staff room. And then he sees this. Kiryu Moeka. He saw Kiryu Moeka. And if you saw season one, Okabe panicked. He was immediately hitting the panic button. He was like, what is she doing here? What is she doing here? And, you know, at that point, he has to remind himself that this, that, that this is another world line. It is not the same world line that he knows. And that everything in his world line is somewhat okay, except for losing Kurisu. So, <clears throat> the seminar is beginning. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So, the seminar is beginning. Okabe is noticing that Maho is on stage with Professor Liskinen, who's giving the presentation. And during the seminar, the topic is artificial intelligence, but before they're really going to go in depth with artificial intelligence, they're talking about a paper, a thesis paper that has to do with human memories and storing human memories. And it was none of created by, and it's very hinted due to the way that said her theory, you know, the person who created this theory passed and, you know, it was created by Kurisu. This, this theory had to do with storing human memories. So with being said, they took her thesis and her theory and put it to work. With this thesis, they basically concluded that they were able to store her, store her own memories and create it as a AI and you know AI as the data, as a database for it. To really Okabe's other shock and horror. And horror. Um Honestly, it, you know, the crowd is, the crowd is you know, anxious. They're talking about the AI is developed from human memories. Everything's kind of, you know, Okabe is just waiting and waiting and waiting. He's, he's keep getting these flashbacks from Kurisu. It, the anime hints at this heavily. It really does. You may not be able to see her face, but it's her body figure, her hair. You can kind of conclude that the AI is going to be Kurisu. So, the episode ended with the program getting its name. It's called Amadeus. And it just shows his utter horror and shock on Okabe's face. And that's how the episode ends. So my final thoughts was the episode that it's very different from where season one ended. You know, season one, he went back in time after getting that message from himself, you know, to say to, you know, Kirikurisu you know, to save the world. He did it. That, that, that was the end of Steins Gate. And, but in this world line, it's different. See, see, I think in this world line, it's showing the ending or how the message Okabe received from himself is showing that timeline. So I believe we're on this timeline. But I also believe that um, Okabe is, is suffering from PTSD um, because it, it's hinted heavily, like he's, you can tell he's not the same, and he almost threw up at the mere flashback mention of 
Kusu. He almost threw up. Just thinking about her. So I so I I do agree that this episode is standing setting the stage for an explosive series. Um, simply because I think this is all the timeline where where it's showing Okabe sending that message back himself. So World War Three is pre is prevented. So I, I really just want to see how Kurisu is incorporated in this anime. I know she's dead, but I also know she's she's very hinted that she's going to become an AI in this series. But man, I'm I'm hyped to continue watching. I'm hyped to continue uh, note taking and and giving my first impression of this for you guys. But but I can tell you, this is going to be another masterpiece of of an anime. It's already. But but that's it for today, everybody. Have a great day. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel below. The next impression video I have coming out is going to be Persona Five. That's the next content I'm going to be bringing to you guys. But that's it for today, you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.